Hello, welcome again to another episode on Talk Architecture with your host, Nazia T. Mohamed Yaqob. Continuing on the new architecture curriculum topics, this is the second episode on introducing the new architecture curriculum. This topic is to do with an in-depth study of a particular case in architecture, an in-depth study would constitute visiting the site and doing observations. It could be direct observation based on a set guideline or criteria. Or it could be a participant observation where you assume that you're a user or, you know, that you are a user in real and you are using the space as you would and therefore you have some sort of observation about it because you're using it. Participant observation is kind of important in architecture and especially in architecture education and that is why site visits recommended by the tutors and external critics of buildings and places is an important factor to develop the understanding of architecture and to get students of architecture to actually experience what it is. The connection between what they say, the language that they use, the things that they communicate, the ideas and thoughts with other people. It became real, it became sensorial, it became somewhat concrete or tangible. And then they're able to actually, based on that observation, based on that action of going through that space themselves, or, you know, the, the place, give them a sense of how to actually communicate. And that's such an important factor in education. What we call case studies is essentially those type of things that is necessary for the learning to be done. Now, just a general term, case study, not even architectural term, means a process or record of research into the development of a particular person, group or situation over a period of time. You're visiting a building and you're trying to understand and go deeply into that building. But you're just visiting for about half an hour. What you have is a tourist gaze. You're not actually using the building as a participant. You're actually not using the building day in, day out for an, a l longer period of time. But what you're doing is just visiting it for a while and just admiring Whatever that is you want to admire, maybe the design or the aesthetics or the external facade or or the interior or something like that. And then you used it as an example for your practice for or for your design. Another thing is the definition of case study in general is a particular instance of something used or analyzed in order to illustrate a thesis or principle. It is exactly that, where, you know, that half an hour, you you have a sense of what it is, and you analyze it, and then you would like to illustrate a principle. Maybe the use of columns create a some sort of a musical score, such as the Baroque church. You know, there are principles of that being used in terms of the classical orders, in a way, rhythmically or not, helps to um, create a sense of theoretical a crescendo of music, of tone. Say whatever bullshit that you want to say. <laughs> As an architecture student or a tutor. <laughs> Reflecting on classical columns and how it relates to Baroque music be it Mozart or Beethoven, 
and all that. But anyway, so you visited this, this Baroque church and you use it, use that idea to illustrate what you're doing with your design. It's what it is when you analyze something and you want to illustrate the principle of it and also to interpret it in your work. I could also say in terms of the research, um, not design per se, but research uh, in general, when we use a case study, we study in depth. We study who who designed this building and, and uh, we interview that person and we find out how this building was made and so on. So... Interviewing the architect would make us actually understand more about that building, obviously. So, it is a research. It is an interview. It is trying to understand their feelings and how uh, they design it. Their design preoccupations, shall we say. And then we can determine that maybe uh, what we observe is similar to what um, or compare to what has been said by the architect um, makes sense. I think I remembered someone told me about this uh, interview that they had with an architect and they were inspired by poetry when they work. Um, that is a very personal journey, of course. And only the architect would know, the person who designed the building, really. But then when we look at a building, how difficult can it be to interpret a building? So you can start anywhere with designing. And um, But that is what we want to know. The reason behind the design from the person who designed it themselves. A case study is something that is tangible and which means that you don't just refer it from a book or internet or a magazine. There are a lot of architecture mag magazines around. We just say that that's from the internet as well. And pin interests. And a lot of images that students of architecture just pick it up from the internet. This is in the case that I have encountered and suggest that they're interested with this picture. But there is no depth in terms of the study or the research to the building uh, that they show or the space of the building that they show. They're just interested with it. It's always something that um, I noticed happened in the first or the second year, and of course it still happens in the third year. So the question there is, what have they learned? If the methods and technique of learning is not helping the student to learn, or the architect to learn, and it's just a copy-paste of images to actually shall we say, coincide or suit the purpose of what they want to do. Just say they want to show it to the client. Okay, I'm just seeing this image or an AI image and I will just use it to show to the client maybe that's what they want. If the same mistake is done by the architect, the same mistake, meaning the same way that, that they approach architecture design when they were a student, they will be caught out. Unless the client also likes it that way. So, that's really basic in terms of uh, the understanding of design and architecture. And if that's the case, then that's the case, isn't it? But what is a case study in architecture? And why is a case study so essential in the architecture program 
is essential in the new architecture curri curriculum. We have tried to teach students of architecture, um, do the architecture course online when there was the COVID pandemic. And um, everyone was really tired uh, because they have to go online and everyone was kind of feeling the frustration of learning through online teaching because the environment around them may not be conducive. They may be sitting at the dining table or sharing the laptop or just things happening around them that they cannot concentrate on their studies. This is for the students. And for the lecturers, they would have to cope with people not listening to them, people not interested in what they have to say or conducting a class as if it is like a face-to-face -face learning. And I had the opportunity to teach a universal design elective through online teaching exclusively. I never actually met many of the students ever. So in this case, how did we do it? The instructions have to be really clear and precise. And um, you need a lot of energy to tackle in this case, in this way. But to use case study method would be semi successful. I say semi because for certain people, it really helped them. I mean, the majority of people, it helped them. There was a time when we teach second year students and they had to do a case study of uh, the topic or the subject matter that's related to the design project. They were doing cottage industry um, and they needed to visit similar places in their hometown. They can't come to Kuala Lumpur or to where the university is, obviously. So wherever they are, you know, may it be like in Taiping or in Penang or in Sarawak or wherever they are, they will find that cottage industry that they identified. Is it making noodles, making cakes? And they will illustrate the case study online. A case study that they can do themselves would be successful most of the time. But for a case study that they need to interview the architect or the lecturer to actually take them to the place and talk about the building and reflecting on the detail of the joints or something to do with visiting a site and all of them learning from it, that would be difficult, that sort of case study. You can't really instruct the student to find a similar case study in their hometown. It is a specific building or a specific design that you need to take the students to together as a group and to study their building. That kind of case study is really important as well in design theory or in architecture design theory and in history of architecture and a lot of other, um, you know, in construction, in um, many of these uh, other topics um, that require an interpretation by the lecturer to be done as well. And an anal analysis and an ex explanation, because the building is not going to walk to them, obviously. They have to go to the building and notable buildings. We can learn from bad examples because learning from bad examples or talking about examples that doesn't work would also illustrate to the student, oh, this is not a good thing and why and the reasoning is the water seepage or uh, expansion joints that doesn't work and, uh, you know, this is more to do with material science or construction uh, or maybe maintenance issues. And when we visit a bad example that helps to recognize or identify things that are not working. And it is very much part of the learning process. 
But my understanding is that there are some case studies which we did, which allowed the students to actually break free from their mental block. There was a particular project where we we had the site in uh, Indonesia. We traveled, uh, flown there to Bandung, and we visited a hall that was created uh, in 1930s or 40s or 50s. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't have the precise one, but I think it's 30s. And then that hall is made of timber, and it's a very grand hall of a university there. Uh, and the students observed it and analyzed it and sketched it out, you know, the details and the joints. And they went back to Malaysia and they actually tried to interpret that detail in their own design. And one of the best ways is when you first have to deal with this problem and how you understood uh, construction with timber and then after that, how the joint came to be and the expression of it um, is one way of you learning and then after that you learn other ways of construction and obviously we focus on tectonic which means that um, it has to be a dry construction and not concrete so that students could actually understand tectonics and the construction of joints using dry construction. Introdu introducing them to timber, introducing them to uh, steel, and eventually it's not a copy-paste a situation. They would learn from the case study and they will be confident about that. And for those who want to do architecture, at the end of the day, it will build on their experience and and refining their expertise and understanding construction, whereby someone who is not taking architecture after they graduate, they gain confidence from going through the process. I will talk about the design process later on in different episodes, but this one is about case study and they're all related really. A case study, when you study it in depth and you understand about the process, Maybe the architect would talk about the process of design and the challenges that they face uh, from their experience building or designing the building is something that is valuable for the student of architecture to recognize. Perhaps they don't really understand what exactly the architect is saying, but it made them think about this, uh, the process being an important factor in uh, the whole endeavor of designing. And there's no instant remedy, there's no instant solution that comes presto from their mind or ideas and, and become an excellent product instantly. A case study is so valuable in that sense that you can't deny that being one of the main um, methods of learning for the new architecture curriculum. And case studies should, should be um, compulsory for every project. Every single project the student do, they would be seeing a value of the method. And it all encompasses in the observation, uh, analysis, and synthesis. Observation meaning that I said just now, the direct or the participant observation. Research methods or research principles and strategies do tell upon with the design um, process, meaning they, they are helpful to describe the design process as well because in the design process, you do have these research methods and investigation going on. Because you can't just make it mysterious and not call it out. 
to call it out. Oh, you're doing an observation technique to call it out that you're actually doing a direct obse uh, observation or you're doing a participant observation to call it out would make the student realize, oh, is that what it's called? Oh, is that different? Is it different uh, if I go there 30 minutes to discover something? Is it different than if I were to stay there overnight or in a longer period of time? Yes, there is a difference. And was it, what is, does it, is it called, you know? The nature of things is not to be glossed over. It's, it's to go in, in depth. It's to go deeper into it. So, these Understandings or the, the way they know how to use case studies and why is it called an observation technique and why is it called a focus group. You know, another way of understanding something is through focus group, right? In a design thesis process, um, say the student is doing a third year project, which is akin to a design thesis. And they understand that having a group of people discussing about a topic that they're trying to do would conjure a lot of, um, shall we say, um, a lot of data. And how they observe the, those data is important for their work. So let's put out an example here that they're doing a group work for their final project or quote-unquote design thesis in the third year and using a focus group of the villages or shall we say the townspeople or community near this site slash sites they could hear out what are the main concerns which could eventually the data that they capture or they hear out is interpreted as the design problem. This is a method of finding out first-hand knowledge, primary source of evidence to help with their a project. So all these research methods like observation technique, a focus group, Interviews, obviously, a group, like focus group is a group interview, right? But with certain principles. And that can be done immediately. Not the ones that are, uh, takes a longer time for them to do. Um, so case study methods, you know, and the expectations or what um, is needed to actually assist them in analyzing is also needed to be instructed to them. So the relationship of research and design is very close in that, in that respect. And architects or the tutors would need to be also comfortable with all these. There are a lot of things to say, but I hope that this particular session and episode on the case study would help us to understand how, how important it is with respect to all the, the projects that is the student going to do in that three years of the new architecture curriculum uh, course. So with that, I'd like to conclude and um, look forward to the next topics, which will be on design problems, designing the new cu uh, curriculum, I mean, explanation on new curriculum and summaries of, of what is it that is special about the new curriculum 
and then the new curriculum in the whole system of architecture, education, and practice. So this is the second episode. You had an earlier episode on the student point of view. So the second episode is talking about an essential component that will assist students of architecture and the roots that it came from, which is the research methods. But we've heard it before in architecture, um, education or in learning architecture, we do have case studies, but in this case, we need to spell it out. What is a case study? And inside a case study, there are all sorts of things you can do, like a focus group or an observation technique. And how does it relate to previous projects that we've done? And why is it so important? And why we can't do architecture course uh, online and make everybody frustrated? And how was it dealt online? I mentioned just now, in order for it to actually work, the case studies. But only one particular case study in which the tutor has to come with the students to illustrate something important and have the interpretation for the student and this, and them analyze together is also important. And that is the one that you can't do online. So case study is something that is crucial and will be explained in the new architecture curriculum um, proposal soon. Thank you for listening.